people, they live on their phones and they're just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling and when they come across a certain person, they follow them and they take their advice in a certain area of their life and sure that area of life might be great, whether it's again music or income or relationships or meditation. But then when that person starts talking about diet and they start talking about why a vegan diet might not work or why this other diet is the way to go, the new vegan actually takes that person's advice when it comes to diet and they get influenced by someone who's not even eating a vegan or raw vegan diet. So if your goal is to eat vegan, your goal is to eat raw vegan, you've got to focus on people who are eating the same way. You have to study those people, you've got to learn from those people, you've got to listen to podcasts from those people, you've got to listen to interviews of those people, watch interviews of them on YouTube, you've got to study them, you've got to read their posts, you've got to read their captions, you've got to go to their retreats, you've got to go to their festivals, you've got to hang out with these people, you've got to absorb all their information. And that, the more content you consume from, from, from a, a solid source, the less likely you're going to be influenced by other people. And so. This happens all the time with new raw vegans. They come to the raw vegan scene, they try it for a bit, they're not really sure how to do it properly, and then they watch someone else talking about cooked food and why raw vegan's not the way to go, and then they just hop off the raw food and get, get onto cooked food, and then they go down that route. And it's not just with vegans and raw vegans, it's also new vegans coming over and then going back to vegetarian or going back to eating meat because they think, oh, the vegan diet's just not working for me. And they get influenced by other people eating the other diet. So it's really important to unfollow everyone who's not living in alignment with the kind of diet that you want to eat. It's really important to not watch any videos talking about the benefits of any foods that are not vegan or raw vegan, however you want to eat, all right? Humans, we are so easily influenced by other peers, by other people. We're influenced by, by people who inspire us really easily. We're influenced by people of authority. We're influenced by people who, who we think there's just no more than us or who have the results that, that we want in, in another area of life. But, Truth is, if you're vegan and you want to remain vegan, you've got to constantly watch vegans. If you're raw vegan and you want to stay raw vegan, you've got to constantly watch raw vegans. You've got to read books about raw veganism. You've got to read books about fruitarianism. You've got to study the diet and lifestyle. So that's the second mistake I see a lot of people make. And the way to correct that mistake is just to, to really have a, have a dream team. Create your dream team. I created my dream team. I, I wrote down a list of all the people I want on my dream team. I, I said I want this person on my team, this person on my team, this person on my team, this person on my team. And then I just started consuming those people's content. You can have a digital dream team. And when you consume enough of these people's content, you feel like you're on their team. You feel like you're, you're friends with them. And then you might re meet them in real life and you realize, holy crap, like I never actually met this person, but I know so much about them because I've consumed all their content. And that's how I felt when I first went to my first fruit festival. Walked in there, saw this big panel of, of presenters, and I was like, wow, I'm in the presence of greatness. Like, all these people I've studied, I've watched all their videos, you know, I, I can recite quotes from them, I've watched more of the videos more than once. And meeting, meeting them in real life, it already felt like I'd, I'd been brought up by them all, so they were like aunts and uncles to me. So, that's really important, and uh, it was really important to me, and I think it'll be really important to other people, really valuable for other people as well. Um, there was even a period in time in my life where I was vegan, I started watching other people who were talking about eating, eating things that weren't vegan. And I got so caught up in that, I got so interested, so fascinated by that. And I, I tried eating other foods that, that weren't even vegan for a, a week or so. And I did it, and you, we can justify it. Now I justified it out of the name of like, oh, I just want to experiment. I just want to see, you know, if it, if it works. And in a way, I'm kind of glad I did that. I'm kind of glad I experimented because now, now I realize that that's definitely not the way to go. So if you're considering experimenting with other foods that aren't even vegan, you have my permission, go ahead and eat them. But what you're probably going to realize, what I realized is that if the food's not vegan, if it's not raw vegan, it's just simply not going to really work for us. Like we're not designed for foods that, that aren't plant-based. That's the fact. We're not carnivores. We're not even omnivores. We're frugivores. We're designed for fruit. Fruit works the best for us. And every time we stray off that path, there's some side effects. There's some symptoms. There's some clear signs and indications that we're off nature's way. So keep that in mind.